And so one of the reasons why I'm here today is to sort of inspire you guys that I was just like you and you can be just like me. Um, I don't know if you see the t-shirt he's wearing. On the t-shirt it says we got next. And it means that you guys are next. Like you guys are gonna have to talk to It's called the Anakwe Foundation, Anakwe being my last name, my family name. And um, it's a foundation that just helps promote the game of basketball and just sort of help model kids in a way that would tend to lead them towards being a leader, you know, in the future, whether now or in the future. We have a slogan, which is uh, to sow the seed of hope in hearts where it's non-existent. And it's somewhat like going to underprivileged societies in Nigeria and finding kids who love the game of basketball and helping them in ways that you know they might need. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, which Lagos is one of the most populous cities. The first time that I started playing basketball, I was 12. I have a cousin who played basketball when he was in the seminary and he noticed how I was growing taller and he was like, hey, you need to stop playing soccer, you gotta stop playing basketball. And so he bought me my first basketball, gave me my first pair of basketball shoes and um, from there I fell in love with the game and it's been you know, all, all up from there. Michael's background in basketball has not been like some of our other guys. You know, he, he grew up in a place that's not a basketball culture like we have here. So he, he was a little behind as far as that is concerned. But he comes to practice every day. He works extremely hard. When he, he pushes our guys, he encourages our guys, he, he competes against them in practice. Uh, he's made huge strides in, as far as knowing what we do. And, and figuring out the little subtleties of, of, of college basketball and being on a basketball team. I was out injured for pretty much the entire year from January till the end of the year. I'm standing and I'm learning and I'm looking at the game but I cannot play. And I was just thinking, you know, what could I do to, to just still be involved in the game even though I'm injured? And then it just occurred to me, hey, why not just take the knowledge that you've learned back home? To me, one of the most immediate need, you know, for young basketball players in Nigeria is just access to gear, most especially shoes. I think as soon as Mike kind of let us know that uh, he was going to start a foundation uh, and kind of use his platform as like a Division One basketball player um, to help people back home in Nigeria, we're all uh, we're all for it. The whole team wanted to jump on board and help any way we can. We had a bunch of shoe boxes left over in our locker room and any shoes that guys are willing to give away, you know, basketball shoes, running shoes, even just casual lifestyle shoes. Um, we just all collected them and gave them to Mike and then he essentially just shipped them back to Nigeria and was able to give out gear and equipment from Lafayette Athletics to, to all the underprivileged kids back home. At the same time that I reached out to a couple people, I realized that SAC does a shoe drive every single year. SAC stands for uh, the Student Athletes Advisory Committee and, and it's made up of um, a couple student athletes from different sports who come together and try to you know, come up with ideas of how to better the uh, student athlete experience. So as SAC president, we typically organize a community service donation drive in the fall semester and the spring semester. And typically in the spring we do heel to sole and we collect shoes from all the different sports teams, especially for teams that get new shoes every year. And we donate them to a local shelter. But Mike came up to us when he heard that heel to sole was something we were looking to do and said, well, I know you're doing this heel to sole drive, but I was thinking of putting on a basketball clinic back home and would love to collect shoes and gear. So if you could potentially give me some of the shoes, all of the shoes, I would be so appreciative of it. Having that support from SAC, you know, it's like if without SAC, the whole thing wouldn't have happened. You know, without SAC, the kids wouldn't have received the pairs of shoes, and I, I probably would have been able to teach them the game, but it still wouldn't have as much impact as, you know, giving over 100 kids, you know, brand new shoes, and, you know, it's, it's SAC, SAC did definitely help a lot. The camp started, it was a three-day event, and it was, it, was very, it was very amazing. I didn't really know the amount of kids that were gonna show up because um, I knew the kids loved the game, but I didn't really know, you know if they would really be interested in the game as much as I wanted them to. Getting there, you know, getting to talk to the kids and teaching them the game. I mean, like up, up over 120 kids showed up for the first day. Um, every single one of them got a parachute, which was amazing. 
long term, I wanted to get to a point where um, we can get to a point where like um, kids who are exceptional, you know, not just basketball wise, academic wise, can get an opportunity to get a scholarship and come um, to school, maybe high school or college here. And also, you know, not just that, you know, the future goal is to have kids who come to my camp represent Nigeria on the national stage, you know. It's, it's stuff that I think about. It might be, you know, a goal for like the farthest future, but, you know, I'm definitely uh, invested in this to see how far it can go.